that MedSafe has approved the conditions of the uh, the Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine for use in New Zealand. That provisional approval was agreed and gazetted today by MedSafe. And I've got with me here Chris James, who's the group manager of MedSafe, who'll talk shortly and help me with responding to your questions. So the provisional approval is very much the start of a new chapter in New Zealand's COVID-19 response and a significant milestone in that response. I do want to recognise the work of Chris and his team at MedSafe, our country's medicines regulator, uh, in working so hard to get to this point of approving this vaccine, uh, alongside the analysis and advice provided by the Medicines Assessment Advisory Committee that met yesterday. The most important things that have been under consideration in this process, and Chris will talk more to this, are the safety and effectiveness of the vaccine and the quality of its production. The assessment process that MedSafe undertakes, as with all the medicines, is extremely robust. Staff there have worked for many months to assess clinical trial data, and more recently, they've been able to draw on the real-world immunisation from data uh, data from countries that are already rolling out vaccines to their populations. And Chris will speak shortly to you more about this process, but I just want to emphasise that point for you and for all New Zealanders that safety and efficacy are paramount considerations. Uh, you've heard the Prime Minister and I've mentioned provisional approval or approval with conditions, and what this means is that whilst the vaccine has been approved by MedSafe, uh, it has set conditions that the country continues to provide them with ongoing clinical trial data and data from manufacturing sites. And again, Chris can speak further to this. That ongoing data provision and analysis will continue in parallel with the rollout, just as it is in other countries that are already vaccinating their populations. Alongside the process that MedSafe has, uh, has been doing, the Ministry of Health's Chief Science Advisor, Dr. Ian Town, has assembled a technical advisory group to provide advice to the government uh, on the use of the vaccine, which populations it is most suitable for, and the conditions in which it should be used, this particular Pfizer vaccine. And further announcements will be made on that accordingly. That group uh, meets tomorrow. As Minister Zona have said before, the priority though, we know, is to vaccinate people who at the moment are at high risk, highest risk because they are exposed more than the general population to COVID-19. And that is of course our border, managed isolation and quarantine uh, people, workers uh, and the people they live with. This of course includes the staff, including cleaners, waiting staff, kitchen staff at the hotels that are managed isolation facilities the nurses and healthcare assistants that do the health checks and the, the um, uh, COVID-19 testing, security staff, as well as officials uh, at our border, customs and um, MPI officials, airline staff, including air crew uh, and others, as uh, you would imagine. It does also include uh, workers at our ports. Again, we'll show more details on how the program will roll out and as the information becomes available and firm around the expected timeframes that the vaccine will arrive in New Zealand during this first quarter. But I do want to hand over now to Chris to talk more about the approval process and more about this Pfizer BioNTech vaccine. And after that, we will take your questions. Thank you. Thanks, Richard. Good afternoon. So as announced by the Prime Minister today, um, MedSafe formally gazetted uh, decision to grant provisional consent uh, or approval for the use of um, of Cominati, which is the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine here in New Zealand. So this was a carefully considered decision, uh, and it was made following a robust assessment, uh, uh, which routinely we use uh, here at MedSafe. Um, we needed to be assured that the vaccine was safe and effective. Uh, in a New Zealand setting, and that the vaccine was manufactured to a high quality. Uh, we have determined that this is the case. So I wanted to give you a brief overview of the approval process and the data we've been assessing to make our decision. So we've been working with Pfizer for a number of months now, and uh, we started receiving some data back in November, 
Um, we streamlined our assessment process. So instead of receiving a huge chunk of data right at the end, uh, we allowed the companies to provide us with rolling submissions of data. So as the data was available, they could send it to us and we could start assessing it. And what this meant was um, we could streamline our assessment process, but it didn't compromise the rigor of our review or the requirements that we needed to um, ensure were met. And this is the same as we will be doing for all of the COVID vaccines. So it's important that people understand we have not cut any corners in the assessment um, along the way while we worked to make a decision. So there are three key aspects that we assessed. The first is clearly important is efficacy. How effective is this vaccine? And this is determined by results from clinical studies and, um, and information that we've received from the manufacturer, for instance, uh, from Pfizer, from their clinical trials. Second key component is safety. Also very important, and this is received both from clinical studies, but also New Zealand has been in a fortunate position where we've been able to learn from other countries who have already started vaccinating their populations and receiving data regularly from our regulatory partners overseas, uh, from countries that have administered millions of doses of their vaccine. Uh, we then took all the data together and you effectively you do what's called a benefit risk assessment, looking at the benefits of the vaccine and any risks such as side effects or unknown risks. We've also ensured that the company uh, can manufacture the vaccine to a high quality. And this means that all batches are consistent, that the vaccine that we're receiving in New Zealand is manufactured to a really high quality, and that's very important. So MedSafe to the Medicines Assessment Advisory Committee yesterday for its review, so it could provide MedSafe with advice and some recommendations. Now, the MAC is made up of a range of experts from around New Zealand, and yesterday it met for around about six hours to go through this entire assessment. It was a very robust discussion and really helpful for MedSafe. Um, and as Dr. Bloomfield's mentioned, MedSafe has granted provisional approval. So provisional approval allows us to place conditions on the company. So it must provide MedSafe with additional information as it becomes available. We've placed 58 conditions on the approval for Pfizer and, Pfizer and BioNTech vaccine. Um, and of these, 52 relate to manufacturing information. So just to help explain that, as companies upscale their manufacture from say making 10,000 doses to making 100,000 doses, we, they need to provide us with information to make sure the vaccine is still a very high quality for the vaccine we're getting in New Zealand. And that's why we put those conditions in place. Uh, we've also added six conditions for additional clinical information. And this requires Pfizer to provide us with regular updates from their own cl ongoing clinical studies and to inform the regulator as soon as they know if there are any um, possible safety concerns from around the world. So it's very helpful for us. But MedSafe's work doesn't stop there. So as with all medicines and vaccines, MedSafe will be monitoring the use of this vaccine, such as analysing reports, collecting reports of possible side effects, um, uh, as we do for all. Um, we've also published information on our website, and this includes the medicine data sheet for, um, for the Pfizer vaccine, and also some information that's specifically written for consumers to give them information about the vaccine. Um, and we've also published the Gazette notice, which has all the, the conditions um, uh, attached with it. Thank you. So stay right there, Chris. Uh, right, we'll open it up for questions. Chris, can I just ask you to clarify something you just mentioned before? You talked about the meeting being six hours and it being a robust discussion. Why did it take so long when it's been approved all around the world? What was so intense? Why was the discussion so intense? Well, firstly, it's very important that in New Zealand, we undertook a robust process of the data. Um, and there is a lot of technical data that comes through with these assessments. So MedSafe assessment report in itself numbered in the hundreds of pages. And so um, we wanted the committee to, uh, we presented to the committee on the range of say manufacturing information, clinical information, toxicology information that we could then bring together for recommendation about the vaccine. So it was really important we had a robust process in New Zealand so we can provide reassurance to New Zealanders 
that the vaccine is safe and effective and made to a high quality. How, how, is, how is the vaccine getting here? Would it be shipped or transported? Would it be shipped or transported by air? And is it coming with, with the Australian shipment? Uh, yes, thanks for that question. Yes, it will be coming by air. Uh, and we are certainly working closely with both uh, Australia and with Pfizer to um, uh, try and coordinate the shipments and in particular to see if we can, uh, and we have put in orders for vaccine from the same batch as the Australians. Is the Pfizer vaccine ready yet and how long will it, will it take to, to arrive? Well, it's already been used uh, in countries around the world, so it's already been manufactured at scale. And just to reiterate, uh, as we've said before, we're expecting it in the first quarter of this year, so before the end of March, and we are prepared to make sure we are ready to use it if it arrives sooner rather than later in that quarter. How disappointed are you that it's just that small batch that's arriving first, that it's just for the water workers and their families and, and not any broader than that? I'm not at all disappointed. I'm actually very excited. And, if I, uh, and just to point out, and the WHO Director General made this comment today too, I was thrilled to hear from Chris yesterday that this approval had come through. It is less than a year since the WHO declared a pandemic of COVID-19. I'm not sure it even had the name COVID-19 a year ago. And here we are with the first of what we know are several effective vaccines that have been uh, developed and administered now to millions of people around the globe. So I'm actually, I'm, I'm excited about the fact that we have got an approval, that we have been uh, are working hard to ensure we are ready to use the vaccine once it arrives, and that we can gear up our system to deliver the vaccine to every Kiwi who wants to have it. Well, so I think New Zealanders understand why we're not first in the queue for the mass vaccinations, but the question is why it's taken so long to get uh, vaccinations for our border workers who are our... Mm -hmm front line. Can you explain that? Well, we always said it was the first quarter and we're uh, only a third of the way into this quarter and we already have approval. Uh, and, and as you know, we've got ongoing discussion with Pfizer about getting the vaccine here. As soon as we are confident, we know the date that it's arriving, then that will be made public. Right. And uh, just to say, you know, in terms of the size of the batch, we are expecting in that first before the end of the quarter, the first 225,000 courses, so that's 450,000 doses. So that allows us to vaccinate a significant number of people who are at the moment the highest risk, starting with those who are working at the border. On the press, Chris, looking through the data, were you able to ascertain at any level whether um, this vaccine is giving people sterile immunity, whether they are not only stopping the vaccine, you know, becoming sick from COVID, but stopping being able to transmit the virus onto anyone else? Uh, so, no, the data available at this stage does not confirm um, whether it reduces transmission. Um, that's one of the reasons why we require additional information from Pfizer. So when that data, that data starts coming through, we'll know as soon as possible. Looking, at the, looking at the mass vaccinations around the world with this vaccine so far, though, is there anything that indicates whether it does or not, or is that sort of doubt? Most of the data that we're, that we're receiving internationally is on side effect reports. Um, and that's really useful because that's helped to confirm what we're seeing in clinical trials that the um, that predominantly the side effects being reported are minor side effects around sort of sore arm, um, uh, people experience headache, feeling a bit fatigued, for instance. Um, and it's really valuable that the information we've received internationally helps to confirm what's in the clinical trials. But we are yet to get any information that talks to um, does this um, prevent transmission, for instance? To clarify, to clarify, to clarify on the 58 conditions that MedSafe has put on the vaccine, does that mean if Pfizer doesn't adhere to those conditions that they could get the red light at some point? Uh, so we've put timeframes and talked to Pfizer about those conditions and timeframes of when we're expecting that information. Now, any manufacturer in manufacturing medicines or vaccines can, um, uh, you know, when they're trying to upscale, they may run into difficulties. Um, we we keep an open dialogue with Pfizer, and so um, I wouldn't put an absolute on that, but um, we would certainly expect that if Pfizer can't provide that information as they've agreed to, uh, they would need to talk to us, and we would need to mutually agree when it would be provided. Is, is, the, is the Pfizer vaccine um, safe to, to be used on people who are elderly, sick, sick or pregnant? So we've approved the vaccine for, um, for 16 years and older and we haven't put a age limit on that. Where is it being manufactured? Uh, it's being manufactured in, um, the companies tend to use a lot of different sites for like the starting material and then putting it into the vials. Um, 
So predominantly in Germany, Belgium, uh, the US. Yeah. Um, and also, does Netsoc have um, any role in, you know, and other countries are delaying the second dose um, in the uh, UK and US? I mean, would Netsoc be telling New Zealand not to roll it out, um, not to delay the, the second jab? So, so what MedSafe does is we review the data and, and then we provide the recommendation and approval and, and the recommended dosing for um, that we have approved for, for the vaccine is two doses that are 21 days apart. The second so component, you so can I just um, add to that? And um, the, the other group I talked about, the doctor in town is chairing, will be providing advice on that. At this point, of course, there's no need for New Zealand to um, defer and delay that second dose and we will be planning to roll it out in, given our current situation, uh, in accordance with the recommendation from uh, MedSafe, and that is t so that everyone receives that second dose three to four weeks after the first. And on, 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 in charge of the logistics of, you know, getting the vaccine um, to the appropriate people who are going to be given the injection. The Ministry of Health is uh, responsible for that, working closely with all the district health boards. And there's a team of now nearly 100 people in, in the building here that's been working for several months on that. And we will be able to provide more information once we're closer to the date about that whole logistics process of how we're going to be confident. We not only have the vaccine here, but that we can get it out. Recalling that this first Pfizer, vac the, the Pfizer vaccine is the one that requires the minus 70 cold chain. Uh, and that will, once it's been taken out of minus 70, it needs to be used within five days. So it's, there's a reasonable period of time, but obviously being confident we can maintain that cold chain through the distribution will be really important. On the, you te both, on the you technical both, you advice. Both talk, you both um, spoke about the second component being, being safety. What do you say to, to some of the people that are who, who are just a little unsure um, on the vaccine and won't be getting the vaccine immediately because it's been so, so fast and there's been such a fast turnaround? Look, I can understand why people want to be really confident about the effectiveness and the, particularly the safety of the vaccine. And I can make two comments. The first is I, I have great confidence in the process that MedSafe has undertaken. And as just emphasised, as Chris said, no corners have been cut here. We have gone through a robust process. The second is, and Chris also made this comment, is we every day, every week, we are getting more data from around the world as millions more of, of both this vaccine and other va vaccines are administered. And there is nothing out of the ordinary from what we are seeing from the safety data that is coming through. It's it's very reassuring. Yes, Can I just... Oh, sorry, on the um, latest developments in Europe with the variant strain, what do you... How concerned are you about that? Was that predicted or is it... Is, I don't know what the best phrases the variant or mutant hmm. strain is, is that something we thought would happen we absolutely um, expected the virus to mutate to um, to get a competitive advantage as you might say it, it will evolve and that will continue to happen and one of the things to point out is um, that will happen more as we use the vaccine because when people are protected or immunised against the existing strains, the virus will try to find ways to get around the vaccine. We see this with influenza. So we, we did expect that to happen, and particularly because there have been so many people infected globally. So the emergence of the new strains is not unexpected. But I think another thing that is happening apace and that is, is very promising is that the vaccine manufacturers, including Pfizer, are already testing both um, in, in the laboratory and in, in people's response to the vaccine, whether or not uh, the vaccines afford uh, um, immunity to these new strains. And so far, certainly with the strain first identified in the UK, the results are promising. It appears to be for a couple of the vaccines that have looked at this that the South African, the, the, the variant first found in South Africa, does have a reduced um, uh, effectiveness for the vaccines, but it's still highly effective for the ones they've tested. So